afternoon, good afternoon. Welcome to Study Breaks, everyone. What's going on? see everyone hope everyone's doing well i don't know what uh number day we're on in this quarantine but you know we're gonna be rocking until we ain't no more so it's good to see everyone uh just as a um just kind of while we're waiting for everyone to join and hop in uh today we'll actually be uh interviewing a, a gentleman by the name of tyler mitchell um tyler mitchell is um, I would just say, you know, uh, a phenomenal. Um, hey, friend, how are you, man? Hope hope you hope you are well. Tyler, what's going on, bro? Um, but yeah, man, I, I'll allow Tyler kind of give give his own rundown once he um, hops in. Um, but yeah, man, a phenomenal young man. One, of the, uh, I think I definitely think it's fair to say, like one of the most brilliant creative minds that we actually have right now. Um, the work that he's been doing over the last couple of years you know, has been, you know, amazing. And um, yeah, it's, it's an honor and pleasure to be able to, to sit down and talk with him today. So, you know, glad that he's hop he's hopping on. I think he, uh, we're just waiting for him to, to, to get in now. <sighs> Jacoby, what's going on, bro? Glad you're able to join us again, man. I think, yeah, Tyler, you requested it saying right now, waiting for Tyler's photos. So um, I'm not sure if there's something else you got to do on your end, but I I've accepted the invite. There we go. Hey, how's it going? What's good, bro? How are you? I'm well, man. I'm well, man. Just uh, enjoying my, my midday tea. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are, are you a tea or coffee guy? Tea, tea always. Same here, man. Got my little mm -hmm. mug. I know. Chamomile, Chamomile tea. Milk. Yeah, just like a little midday. Because I'll have like a cup of green in the morning. And then mm -hmm. I'll have, and then I'll have, yeah, chamomile in the midday. And then I'll have like chamomile at night. Okay. Yeah, yeah man. I'm actually, um, I uh, made me a, uh, a joint of um, Earl green tea. Okay. Gr okay. Green, green, green Earl, green Earl tea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Join yeah. fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice, man. Thank you for having me. Man, absolutely, man. Thank you so yeah. much for, for joining us, man. I know, yeah. like, you know, you got a, a busy schedule, you know, so the fact that you're taking yeah. time out to... Well, we're all uh, in the crib, so, you know. Nah, we are all posted, man. And so, yeah, man, let's go ahead and get started. People are hopping in. Yeah. Um, you know, first, you know, before we get started, just kind of let everyone know, um, this is Study Breaks, you know, brought to you by Honor Road Clothing Group. Um we're a brand based out of Atlanta. Um, what we're doing right now with Study Breaks is every week we get together with with friends um, and old colleagues um, and even family members, you know, yeah. bro, you know that we have, and um, just talk about things that are going on within the culture. You know, projects that we're working on. Um, this is, in some cases, um, just a platform for us to talk about what's currently going on. Um, and so obviously, you know, with everything that's been shaken up with, with COVID-19, kind of like we just said, like we're all in the crib right now. Mm -hmm. you know, so one of the things that we want to do was make sure that we get, we're giving people valuable content, you mm -hmm. know? And so, um, you know, so things I think in life become so transactional. You mm -hmm. know, so being able to say, hey, y'all come rock with us, come, you know, um, engage in this dialogue with us, you know, free of charge, you know, and pick mm -hmm. up some free game, you know? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, man. So we're glad that we're here. So before we get yeah. started, man, um, yeah, why, why don't you tell the people a little bit about yourself, who, you know, yeah, I yeah. know, like, you're world-renowned at this point, you know. No, but... yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, photographer, filmmaker, um, artist, I guess. Um, I just like to do multiple things. Um, but mainly, yeah, I am a photographer. I shoot a lot, you know, for 
different publications and magazines and do a lot of fashion commissions. I would say that's kind of how I, that's like my bread and butter. And that's like how I mainly, that's like most of my time. And then I also make like, you know, experimental films. I do museum shows. I have a museum show now in New York City. Um, it's closed, of course, because um, of COVID. Uh, but it's at the International Center of Photography, which is a museum in, in the Lower East Side. And um, okay. Yeah, so I do a mixture of things, but mainly all of it is um, with an idea of, of kind of, I guess, centering the young black men and women that I photograph um, and kind of exploring ideas of identity and beauty through clothing, um, through dress. And, you know, also just bringing together community like we just did, you know, we're talking about the quarantine. We, I just did a, uh, me and my friend Trace, we put together a website where I live stream my computer screen for 24 hours. I think and, that. Uh, yeah, and played like a bunch of movies, um, played a bunch of, you know, music videos, short form yeah. videos, videos from my favorite artists. And so that wasn't even, you know, that's just something I wanted to do. So that's like, that can show you the kind of breadth of like everything I do. It's, it, I don't really, con I'm not really concerned with what it is or what to call it. It's just ideas. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so um, we're going to dive into, I wanted to dive into to that um, in a second, but just for everyone who's viewing, just to kind of give you guys some structure for the time. For probably like the first 30, maybe 40 minutes, it's just going to be, you know, me asking Tyler questions, Tyler asking me questions, going back and forth. But we will get to a point to where um, you guys will be able to ask Tyler or myself questions. And so you can drop those down. Um, there should be a question box there. So we're going to do our best to try to get to um, as many people as possible. Um, so Tyler, I do want to pick up um where you where you just left off with about the 24 hour movie night um yeah. that you had you know one of the things that i know first of all like i'm a big film junkie as well mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know yeah. so um yeah man it was dope to see and i love the fact that you also had good burger in there man yeah like, man I there was like that. a lot of film that you had that seemed very serious yeah um, and it was very thought provoking but then there was this kind of refreshing um childlike you know yeah option that was there with with, yeah. with good burger man so yeah what made yeah. you put that in there i'm curious man i love good burger like i i really miss when movies used to feel like that and i just mm. they're just so so like kooky the characters like keenan and kel and like yeah i don't know it's just not it's not really a time where i want to take things too seriously like i think sometimes everything can be so serious and i think it's nice to like I don't know. I just wanted to show it. You know, I love that film. I hadn't seen that film in a while. And also when programming it, it was like, all right, like, this is how we're all feeling. Like, I know how I'm feeling mm -hmm. in my house right now in Brooklyn. I'm feeling cooped up and I've tried to watch a couple because I'm normally like an art house guy. Like, I'm normally watching, like, yeah. you know, some real slow movies, pretty serious, like boring stuff. And like, I, like, I tried to watch one of those films after we went into quarantine, and I just kept falling asleep, couldn't focus, my <laughs> mind was just all over the place. And I was like, I think I, I think my body really wants to see films that feel fun again. So I miss how mm -hmm. that movie felt. And then I watched Girls Trip, <laughs> which was like, mm -hmm. you know, a movie my mom was telling me to watch. Shout out to Will Packer. It's like, yeah, like, it, with, with Tiffany Haddish. And I was like, you know, I would never watch that movie. Like, she's like, you should go see Girls Trip. And I was like, no, that looks terrible. And I watched it, you know, during the quarantine. And actually, I think it's a genius film. I think Tiffany Haddish is so funny. I think the story is so fast paced. And I think uh, Queen Latifah in that movie is so, plays such an amazingly smart character. And I think it reflects like a lot of the black women around me that I grew up with, like my mother and her friends and stuff. So like, I was like, actually these really like fun watches can be really also um, like, can be really thought provoking too. And um, also when we were just programming it, we were like, all right, we want to do 24 hours of movies. It just felt nice to wake up. We programmed it at seven in the morning. So I know it's a lot of people who tuned in from all around the world, but if you yeah. were on the East Coast, you kind of wake up, if you're wanting to watch this program, you wake up at 7 a.m. and you're, wa you're watching Good Burger. It feels like Sunday morning again, you know, yeah. back in the old days where you're like, oh, like, I'm gonna just put on the TV and Good Burger's on and I don't have to think too much about what I'm watching and it's nice and it's fun. And, and then after Good Burger, we did uh, an hour of music videos where I just clicked around on my computer. I was playing my favorite music videos and people, and I was playing Missy Elliott videos and Pharrell videos. And people were just like, oh, this feels like Sunday morning again. Oh, my grandma's house. You know, people were really commenting that in the, in mm. the chat. And I think like- Sunday oh, morning at grandma's. Yeah, I love you, Kerwin too. 
and a lot of the folks in this chat. Um, but no, I mean, I think like we just the the whole twenty four hour movie night thing was just like, you know, wanting to have fun and yeah. music videos and waking up in the morning and feeling like, all right, I'm gonna just put something on and trust us, you know, it's like we got you. You don't have to go on Netflix and like choose through a hundred movies. It's like we already have it programmed. Just come and just come, come and, and enjoy. Uh huh. Yeah. Yo, so I'm curious, like, you know, a lot of the, there was like this common thread in the films that you were showing. Um, mm. Yeah, get the drink, get the drizzle, get the drizzle. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, like there, there was this common thread that was there just with Americana films. You mm -hmm. know? And so and I think it was interesting because like you're a person at this point in your career, you've been all over the place, you know, mm -hmm. shooting for so many different types of people kind of weaving through all these different cultures. What specifically as a as a as a black man in America, like what is it that keeps drawing you back to this Americana um narrative, this Americana um perspective? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a really like good your question. Own taste as well as like in how you're shooting. Like what's what's that draw for you? Yeah, um I mean, you know, the more I travel, the more American I probably feel, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um and how I think so? I mean, you just realize all the things that, uh, you know, make up who you are. And I think, I think like the first trip I went to London for like two months, um, which is where I kind of thought when I like wanted to be a photographer and I kind of thought like, oh, London is the epicenter you kind of have to go to and answer to because all of my favorite photographers are there and all of the photo agencies are there and all the good magazines are there and um, all the creativity is there and New York is so commercial in terms of photography. Right, right. This was like the reputation, like the stereotype. So I went to London and I was like, all right, I'm here to be, you know, taken seriously as like a photographer now. I want to be like, you know, whatever. And yeah. go out there for two months and I realized I feel much more American here. You know, just because I stick yeah. out like a sore thumb, because obviously the biggest thing is the accent, but also the culture and being around black folks in, in England, I was like, oh, we're we really have two different uh, whole cultural reference points, um, right. despite being both black, you know what I mean? Black British and black American. And so then I started to really hone in on what makes me me. And I, I think if you know yourself well, then making art is easy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think that's the easiest part is once you really think about who you are then you know exactly what to make. So I really keep going back to this theme, idea of being American. Um, I love the idea of playing with what American is. I love the idea of right now we're in such a culture where American means so many things. It means so many mm -hmm. destructive and problematic things, but it also means so many beautiful things and such a multitude of things. So I'm like one fraction of that story. Yeah. And I think, I think um, like even when we were programming the movie night, it's like, okay, it's Americana, but oh, they're playing The Farewell, you know? The Farewell is right. a story about a girl who, yes, yeah, she lives in New York, but she's Chinese and her, you know, her nai-nai, her grandma has died in, in China. So most of the movie takes place in China, but it's like, this is an, a Chinese-American story. You know what I mean? Chinese like, context, American lens. Yeah, exactly. And also like, it's about Chinese um, immigration to America. So it's like, yeah. we're a country of immigration. So also in programming it, I thought that was fun to like, think about, all right, America is so many things. It's not just the flag and the the anthem right. and the and the president's office. It's that joint, all that the joint gets is layered. Yeah, exactly. And it's funny because I remember like when because last time I saw you was in London. Um, uh -huh. Me and your cousin Shep, you know, yeah. full disclosure, also my business partner. Uh, yeah. But yeah, the reason you know, one of the things that I think, and I, I also experienced this when you know I went to 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 Paris. You know, abroad, people really love Black American culture. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, of there's so. like this bend towards um, um, hip hop, right? Yeah. There's this bend yeah. towards just how we experienced, you know, this, um, yeah, this, this uh, social experiment called the United States of America. You yeah. Know? And, it's, and it's, it's crazy, like, how it influences the fashion, how yep. it influences the music. And mm -hmm. I remember when we came over, um, I'm not sure if it was, it was one of your friends who was having a barbecue. Um, uh, yeah, was, Jess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We was having that conversation about, like, the, the, the difference of being. Yeah, man. Yeah. And so I think that that's interesting. Like, I, I definitely relate to what you're talking about. Like, the more you go abroad, it's like you have these new experiences. Yeah. But at the same time, like, you realize, like, oh, 
I still am black. Yeah, I still yeah, am an American. American. And it, it almost gets heightened in, in new ways that we yeah. wouldn't experience here. Here, exactly, because maybe here it becomes so second nature. And uh -huh. I think, I think that's what you touched on another point, which is like, you know, um, black music, black American music is so globally central. Like we all, mm -hmm. like you could go to Argentina and some kid who doesn't speak a word of English but speaks but knows every word to every Al Green song. You know what I mean? So it's like, right. like our music is so globally central. And, and so I'm interested in making our images the same, I guess, in a way, like I, I love a um, Arthur Jaffa, who's a filmmaker and artist um, who we actually had on the night at the cinema program, mm -hmm. you know, his, his whole mantra, which I really like is he has this like movie studio that he calls it. Um, he calls it TNEG. The mantra is, we're interested in making uh, essentially black cinema that is as powerful, that kind of replicates the power, beauty, and alienation of black music. Um, yeah. So yeah, they're interested in making black cinema as central to uh, culture in the 21st century as black music was central to the world in the 20th century. So I love that idea. I love that. So it's funny, like, I can't help but to think that, um, and I'm not sure if you've heard this before, but some of the things that you're saying seems to, um, there seems to be like this James Baldwin-esque kind of influence that's there. Oh, yeah. And the, it just in your approach of how you're viewing both your art as well as America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much of an influence has he been? Um, or mm -hmm. are you even familiar with his work? Or I would imagine that you are. Yeah, yeah, no, huge influence. Um, I mean, I have... I was just reading it. It's by my bed. Book of all his stories. I, you know, I read him all the time. I, I read his letters. I read, just look up the whole community of people he was in conversation with. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, he, he wrote a letter, I think, back to, um, was it, who was it to? I can't remember who he wrote this letter to, but when he went to Paris, he wrote a letter back home to someone in New York. And he was like, you know, I, I feel more at home in Paris now. I feel more like myself in Paris. It's funny how I have to leave home to really understand who I am kind of thing. And I very much like identify with that. Like, you know what I mean? Sometimes have home you, can start to feel too second nature. Have you seen the Miles Davis documentary on Netflix? I need to watch that. No, I haven't seen it. Yo, I, I highly recommend it. And it's talking about, I mean, obviously like they were contemporaries, right? Like yeah. That, wow. Yeah, like they 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 were moving around at the same time and a lot of what james Baldwin was talking about i mean like the documentary on miles davis goes mm -hmm. into a, into detail about what that experience was and even what it was yeah. like being in relationships you know with with white women in pair in, in in paris and then how that translated like coming back to the states and like the, yeah. you know some of the 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 separation anxiety that he had like i, yeah. I highly recommend that Okay, I'm gonna check that out. I'm gonna check that out. Yeah, yeah, man. Cool. So, yeah, so one, it, it's funny that like we're kind of going on like this thread of blackness and being American. And mm -hmm. cause, like the last two um, state breaks that we had, you know, one was with a guy named um, Fred Cook. He's mm -hmm. done some design, um, a lot of great designs with Jordan Brand, Travis Scott, a bunch of guys, and then another gentleman by the name of Alexander John, um, who's done immaculate work with Puma, Rock Nation, was working on some stuff with Nipsey before he passed away. Mm -hmm. And there's been this conversation of like, man, it, it just constantly keeps coming up about being highly talented, highly equipped, and being Black in these spaces and what those experiences have been. Mm -hmm. You are treading in some waters that, you know, not too many people, one, your age, and definitely not your your ethnic background has done mm. you know, i mean so the first mm. thing i want to like i want to if we can man like people send up a round of applause for, for tyler for that because the stuff that, that you're doing like it's mm. un, uncharted territory right mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. yeah. think about like yeah. the stuff that you did with beyonce and vogue like that was the first mm -hmm. and correct me if i'm wrong like weren't you the first african-american male to, to do mm -hmm. that to do that shoot or do that cover yeah, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yo, so like, what has that experience been like for you thus far? You know, just being a young black um, man in this particular context and navigating, you know, this fashion creative world that you know I'm sure you know you would agree is pretty yeah. Eurocentric. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So how how, yeah, how, yeah. how how are you working through all that? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, on one level, it's like 
you know, it could, I could, you know, probably spin it some doom and gloom story, but yeah, I think it's, I think maybe also it's worked to my advantage at some in some ways to be so young and to be so uh, hungry and like. I don't know. I, I, I'm having fun, like, in a way. Like, you know, think think about all those accomplishments is definitely heavy. And I think I'm interested in kind of, like, having fun right now. Like, you know, doing night at the cinemas, you know, playing movies for folks, joining up, having community, not being too serious about it. And maybe just trying to, like, ang like yeah, I am doing stuff. Maybe nobody my age is dumb. But, I mean, why, why shouldn't I? You know what I mean? It's like, that's just what I want to do. That's just how I am. So I think there's no other way to go about it. And I think, I think I'm just interested in having fun right now and lightening it up. And just being that example for people is, is nice, I guess, you know, so if I can be anything for that, that's good. But also just, also the main thing is like, you know, for all the responsibility it comes with i'm also still an artist you know i'm also still 24 years old uh for the next five days at least <laughs> okay okay um you know so happy it's early like, birthday bro yeah thank you um so you know i i'm really interested in just being a 24 year old artist also you know what i mean just making stuff i'm always making stuff i'm always trying to have fun i'm always trying to i mean not in this quarantine but just trying to be out and about so it's just that's how it's got to be. I think, I think you can't, you got to do what you want to do, but you also can't like be too doom and gloom about it and be like, Oh, this system is so, the system got me down. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Yo. So, I mean, I appreciate that perspective. I mean, I think like that gives, I think like one of the worst things that we could ever do is like pretend as if things don't exist. Right. Um, but then if you, you can get, you could bend so far to that, to, to that, to that reality, like to the yeah, yeah. and gloom, and you yeah. don't even realize like the hope and the grace that God has given us to yeah. do some of the amazing things. And even the shoulders that we're standing, the sacrifices that we yeah. made in the past to give us this freedom and this luxury to be able to do these things, right? Yeah, so yeah. I think that's dope. Yeah. So in light of that, man, I'm curious for you. Um, and too, I know we talked about like it going back and forth. So if you ever have any questions for me throughout all this, yeah, yeah. To, to chime in, but yeah, man, like, being such a prolific um, photographer and filmmaker, what, like right now, what is a story that has not been told yet that you feel like yeah. you want to be responsible for telling or a particular narrative or perspective? Um, that's a really good question. I think right now is like, right now is kind of an ideation period, I guess. Um, in terms of narratives I'm interested in telling, I mean, I think up to this point, I've been kind of positing this idea of like young black folks as kind of teeming or being close to freedom um, visually. So I'm interested in like all the ways in which that can play out. I'm interested in like, I, I love like, I I'm kind of mind, I'm kind of like, my mind's a bit blown right now having this, having had this conversation with um, Arthur Jaffa, who I keep referencing a couple days ago, you know. Uh, so I, you know, ultimately what I want to do is be a filmmaker, you know, be kind of okay. in, within within a Hollywood system, but be kind of subverting that, whatever that means. And so I'm interested in making movies and um, that's what I've been trying to work on. So the photography thing has always been an amazing kind of practice ground or um, like playground to make arresting images that grab people. Um, and all the accomplishments mm -hmm. have been amazing, but I, I think I'm well on my way to like kind of taking a stab at making a movie. And so I was talking to Arthur and uh, AJ, you know, he was second unit DP on Crooklyn, worked with Spike Lee. Um, he was cinematographer on Kubrick's Eyes Wide Shut, um, Daughters of the Dust. So, you know, he mm. went from that to, um, to being an artist. And when we were in conversation, I was like, you know, what do you think of this movie or that movie? And he's like, yeah, all that's cool. You know, you can be a black director per se and, you know, have a movie with black actors in it. And have that won't that won't necessarily be black cinema, you know. Um. I love I love his interest in. He's like you can make a Hollywood film with some black actors in it with you know Issa Rae and Lakeith Stanfield, you know whatever. But it might not necessarily be black cinema. So I'm interested in like, what are the things about me culturally that can make it onto the screen in very technical ways? Like AJ is interested in like manipulating images to, yeah. you know. He's interested in like basically making jazz with images is how he looks at it, you know, freestyling and mixing things up and making these mixtapes of things he likes. I really like that. So I'm interested in like doing the production version of that or the movie version, you know, it's like, how can I kind of make a film that feels like me, feels like how I feel 
Um, that's what I'm interested in doing. Feels that's, young and free, you know? Young and free. So, so there's the young and free part, right? But then there was something that you said about, you know, you have black, you know, actors and it could be a black director and it's still not necessarily, necessarily be black cinema, right? So mm -hmm. like for you, like what, how would you describe black cinema? Well, I mean, this is more, that's, I was quoting AJ there. I mean, you have to ask him, but when we talk about it, like, I think of black cinema as something, and he defines it as something that, um, a movie, right? The images, mm -hmm. the sequencing, the editing, all the technical elements that go into a movie, the sound mixing, the aesthetic decisions, they all reflect essentially the modality or the frequency at which black folks live. Mm. So not to get like too crazy and like heady and shit, but like, how can an image, you know, you know, when you feel, you know, and like, you know, and it's a group of folks out dancing in a parking lot and somebody's filming with an iPhone and then they throw the camera, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? When they mm -hmm. do that, that is like, to me, that's like a black movement specifically. That's like, how did he know to react? The way yeah. the dancer was gonna react when he, yeah. that to like, me it was like, something that was intuitive to their experience that they knew exactly yeah. where the motion was going. Yeah. And it's like a jazz solo with a saxophone. So that's how AJ describes it. And I really love that definition. And um, yeah, I mean, he's, def he's definitely an inspiration. I mean, I'm only 24, so I'm figuring out what my own version of that is. But like, what are the things that I feel inside? How can the camera essentially do that? You know, it's like, how can the camera do that? How can the sound do that? Build this world and be a work of specifically black cinema, basically reflect the frequency at which I live. You know what I mean? The, w the frequency at which I have lived. You know, what does yeah. Georgia feel like? What is it? You know what I mean? Yo, so you you just like, that was a perfect segue into the next two questions I, I wanted to ask you. Um, and I see questions that are popping up in the timeline. Um, do me a favor. Um, if you have not already, go ahead and just put those in the actual, not the comment box, but the questions box. Um, and we're going to get to those in a second. So, Gav, I know you posted some stuff. Um, do me a favor. Go ahead and, and put those questions in there. We're, we're going to get to it in a couple minutes. So, um yesterday right like i was um actually before i get to that question you talked about like you know making film that you know creating this something that feels natural to you that feels like mm -hmm. it, right um mm -hmm. and so like that goes like to this you know very um introspective this introspective notion of knowing yourself mm -hmm. if you could block off from like say middle school up until mm -hmm. like your current point right now and someone was creating a screenplay like mm. what would that overarching narrative be for you oh man i mean <laughs> that's kind of what i'm trying to do now isn't it i'm I'm kind of mm. trying to write or trying to package some of my experiences up into a screenplay right now <laughs> and it's hard um but um i think middle school to now has been you know, I made a film for American Eagle, um, which is hilarious because I was kind of casted as a model <laughs> to model in their campaign. And uh, essentially, they how, like how many saw... collar shirts did they send you? <laughs> I don't even remember, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> but um, they uh, they hi they hired me, casted me, whatever, to be a model. And then it it turned into you know you know how they make those little films on each of the models and campaigns usually. Yeah. So they clearly saw that I was a very ambitious director, young director, and they were like, would you want to direct your own film about yourself? And so what I did was I went back to Georgia, you know, used the budget that they gave me, went back to my high school in Atlanta and told a story about, a fictional story, right? It starred me, but it was a fictional story of saying, imagine a boy who can't swim, teaches himself how to swim, takes a dive, a leap of faith by moving to New York, um, you know, start his life out by skateboarding doesn't really know what he wants to do with his life finds filmmaking through skateboarding decides to move up to new york city and then i use this metaphor of swimming and taking a leap of faith and diving off a high diving board um mm -hmm. both as like as like a metaphor and a play on this idea that black folks can't dive or can't swim right but also you know to talk about my story literally so you know i i really like that do you have film that film that I, is that film available anywhere yeah, yeah, you could you could Google it. It's if you type in like okay. American Eagle, uh, you know, and then my name. Tyler Mitchell. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll it'll 
it'll come up. But I, I, I really like that piece. I think I'm always trying to reflect that feeling a little bit. Like that was a commercial, obviously, but if I can make the feature film version of that, that's probably what the screenplay would look like. That's what's up. That's yeah. what's up. So like one of um, you know, even kind of going back, like even to like the your your roots in Atlanta, you know, mm -hmm. um yesterday when I was leaving therapy, um, I was um I decided to like take like the scenic route home and instead of hopping on two eighty five, just drew from seventy five to, to the west side. Mm -hmm. And it was like at five thirty in the afternoon and you know, this I have never been driving through Atlanta at five thirty and there's been no traffic. You know, yep. and so it was wild because, and I don't know if it was because of the type of therapy session I just had, or if it was, you know, um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what was going on, but I was able to see. It felt like I was seeing Atlanta in a, from a very different lens. Yeah, you know, like being able to like pay attention to like the pattern of the trees. Yeah, um, and the colors, and then even like in Atlanta, like just like that thick in the spring and summertime, like that thick coat of yellow yeah. uh, smog, like yeah, you know in the air that that's the pollen like being able like to just really appreciate like just the beauty of yeah. of what's here and i don't think that i would have been able to do that if i wasn't able if i was as a culture right now in this state of stillness to where people just weren't moving around right you know and so I, i'm curious like for you you know what kind of clarity have you gotten um mm. just as a man and then also as a creative just like mm. in this state of stillness that we're all in um <laughs> i think i've probably lost a lot of clarity <laughs> to be honest mm. with you recently i mean i'm I, I work at home anyway um most days um and so you know this quarantine isn't that different from my day-to-day -day life um, oh so, so you on you on you on your pocket right now yeah so this is like you know i'm usually home and i'm usually you know i, I usually like have a little routine but i'm usually home or around home when i'm in new york um I definitely, though, uh, my mind jumps around more now with this quarantine because it has to do with the state of the world and thinking about projects. How do you plan for the world we're going to come out of after this is over? Yeah. I don't really think it makes sense right now or it feels strange right now to pick up my pen and try to write a film for the world that we're going to come out of after this quarantine. I mean, we have no idea what that world's going to even be, if it's even going to be relevant. How's, you know, to think, to even think about putting all that effort in who's going to produce finance it you know where's the fun what is the fun you know the whole situation around production of films i think hollywood is going to not be the same world i think um mm. i think if, if we're thinking about me putting this film within a hollywood context or even like thinking about art projects i want to do who knows what you know museums have laid off you know 50 60 people alone mm. you know out the gate the things that are going to come out the gate i'm assuming i mean who who you can't plan for anything right now in a way so my mind has been very distracted, but you know, I think about Hollywood and I'm like, well, the first films that are going to come out the gate, it's going to be the Batmans, you know, it's going to be the movies right. that need, need to make them the money back essentially. So, uh, you know, that's not my, you know, that's not, that's not, I, I'm not interested in making that. So, um, you know, I think for me, it's, I find it a lot, really every 15 minutes I get a bit distracted. I mean, I'm working on a couple projects right now um <clears throat> but not, night at the cinema has been a real therapeutic way to just like screen stuff and then like communicate with people and like feel like there's a community out there um yeah which has been saving me a little bit yeah that's what's up i got one more for you and then we're gonna go ahead and dive into the questions so yeah. this is kind of going back to um the 24-hour you know screening that you did from your laptop Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure you're aware of this at this point, but like AMC is in a lot of trouble right now, right? Yeah, and, yeah, totally. Like you said, like Hollywood is not going to be the same. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that there's any industry that is going to look that that is untouched in this particular you know season of our life, right? Like everything is going to look different. Yeah, from a business aspect, you know, and again, I know you said that you haven't thought much about you know. I guess not necessarily not thinking about the future, but like what things could be because it's so uncertain right now. Yeah. But like, what are some of the things are you excited, potentially excited about? And yeah. both as a creative and as an entrepreneur, yeah. And opportunities to be able to 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 share your perspective through large, you know, avenues. Now that some of these bigger players are going to be toppling down. 
Yeah, well, <clears throat> I mean, uh, I, we don't want no one to lose their jobs. We're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, you know, but I mean, it's going to be a new world order. I mean, we all know that. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, like, I, I think I'm still <clears throat> on that thing of like wanting to have fun. You know, I think I'm still on that thing of like, you know, um, wanting to make art. Um, which I think, I think, I think ultimately, um, is never gonna, you know, lose purpose if it's right. good art, if it's good art. Um, I think good art and good artists are like beacons for the future. They're almost like, they're almost like cultural prophets. So, um, I think my job is to just keep doing that. Um, I think that's, I'm just always making shit really. And I think that's part of it. Um, the other part is, you know, business wise i mean maybe night at the cinema can be something for people you know i don't know like that that feels like a community um and i just think i'm just interested in either community or making stuff or being a beacon of what the future could be like i yeah. like i think we're all feeling uncertain but that's what's exciting me right now i mean i'm not really someone who's like gonna you know do a whole photo shoot in my house you know now i'm thinking in other ways where it's like all right you know i'm gonna you know, do this movie screening thing, or I'm gonna work on, um, you know, do a lot of research or a lot of reading, or you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. All right, so yeah. let's go ahead and dive into the questions. Um, you know, first one I wanted to get was back, it was kind of at the top, um, GB Vision. Um, the question is, Blair Tyler, question, do you think there are any barriers right now uh, from preventing you and that vision? I'm assuming the vision that he's talking about is, just the way that you want to create um, and then even, you know, creating, um, you know, potential like in these, in these um, la la larger motion picture films that you were speaking of, like, do you feel any barriers or you, do you think that you kind of have free reign? I, I feel good. Yeah, that that's have, uh, Jimmy, I hope I answer, asked that correctly. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I feel good. I feel good. Um, I mean, I'm in an extremely lucky position where, um, I've really like fought hard to be able to say what I want to say. So, you know, it's just about maintaining that, upholding that, um, continue with that. And um, I, I feel pretty good, you know, I think, you know, I don't think okay. I'm too, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Optimism, optimism is good. Optimism is good. So, all right, we're going to go to, um, so you have a lot of like questions just about like the, the actual technical you know, portion of shooting. So we're going to get to some of those. Um, one question I think that's cool here, and this is from Fat I Am Luxabo. I, man, I'm sorry for butchering that joint, bro. Uh, but how has self-discipline played into reaching the place you are currently in? How has self-discipline? Uh, yeah. Well, I don't, like, I think when you're making stuff, I don't really look at it as discipline. I mean, I think, I think uh, I, I like making shit. So it, to me, it's like fun. It's not like discipline. It's like discipline to me sounds like a word you have to use when you need to like beat yourself into doing something or like you have to mm -hmm. like convince, you have to like keep a regimen or so. So I think I'm always thinking, I mean, even if I'm staring at the ceiling, my mind is kind of wandering and it's thinking about, I don't know how, oh, that light on that white wall could be really interesting for something or, uh, you know what I mean? I, I think it's yeah. not really, I think the cool thing about, um as I make more shit is it's like, really, it's like making stuff is about taking in the stuff around you and really just being like, oh, that kind of, that, that line kind of looks like the way I want somebody's face to look, you know, or what, like, yeah, it doesn't yeah. make any sense to somebody else, but it makes perfect sense to you because you're like, oh yeah, this line has like certain text, maybe if I could, so <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but I don't look at it as like discipline. No, like I get it. My phone, and I even have a file on my on my MacBook that has yeah. images and screenshots and videos of like things that just giving me like strikes of inspiration, of, like how I want yeah. so something to look on a, on a particular garment. Yeah, and I put notes by it, and like you said, like if someone took a look at it, like they would have no idea how to even decode, you know, yeah. all that that I put up there. But you know, for right. you, it's it's personal. Um, yeah. So like. So to that, someone else had a question. Um, Pet Pedro de Silva, we'll go with that. Um, you know, he had, he wants to know what, what were some of your huge visual inspirations. Um, 
visual inspirations. Uh, right now, um, oh shit, sorry, it might be the mailman. Yo, you guys go ahead and keep on tossing your um, questions into the question um, question box. You know, we're gonna try to get to as many of them as possible. It looks like we got about like twenty of them, twenty of them in there right now. Um, definitely, you know, just so you know, you know, we're, the type of co questions that we're selecting are like the ones that are very specific. Um, you know, so yeah, you know, we'll be as specific as you possibly can. Um, um wait, sorry, uh, visual inspiration. Um. Sorry, I've been waiting on this package, so I didn't know who that was. But um, I, I, I really like um, a whole mix of things. Um, you know, Gordon Parks, of course. Um, uh, Roy DeCarava, Paul Thomas Anderson. I mean, a lot of, like, kind of deep film and photo guys. Mm -hmm. you know, like, don't know. I, I like those dudes, and I like... I don't know. I actually really like, like, the Delphonics right now. Um, they're Ooh. kind of inspiring, and I like, I like Curtis Mayfield, and I like, you know, I like. Have Andrew you dove into the stylistics yet? Huh? No, no. Oh wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, I've heard of them. Yeah, yeah. No, but I have. Do you have title? No, I have. Uh, you know, Spotify. Spotify. Yeah. Yo, like I'm a um. All right, I'm gonna send you over a, pl a play old school playlist that I have that has like a whole bunch of like seventies, sixties, fifties. You know, um, black R and B and funk. I think that you'll. If, if those are the kind of people that you saying you on right now, yeah, I think you'll yeah. enjoy this. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, I like all those people. I like. You know, I also really like Steven Spielberg. <laughs> I mean, right. One of the greatest ever. Um, and I really like. You know. You know. Also, just really like. You know, pop artists, Kanye West. You know, just folks like that, like we all do. So yeah. I could dig it. I could dig it. All right. So, um, confidential. Uh, he asked this question twenty minutes ago. Uh, it is. I'm an aspiring photographer, and I don't see too many black fashion photographers in the industry. Mm. I also hear mixed messages about how to get into into fashion photography. Um, the message kind of cut out, but I would imagine that he probably wants to know. Like, is there any advice you could kind of give him or insight on how to navigate some of those waters? Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean, make great work is the first one, you know. Dope product always matters, man. <laughs> it has to be good shit, and it has to be shit that's true to you. Um, and just, you know, I think navigating the waters. Um, this is, I think this is, this is a question I get a lot, and it's a really good one. And, um, there's no, there's no, like, the industry is such a vibe-based industry that I could tell you to go to mm -hmm. this man and go talk to him and whisper the secret into his ear and he'll give you the answer and then you go to the next person and they'll give you but it really yeah. doesn't work like that there's no there's no um you know path of cookie crumbs i can set you off on to like you know eat this one and then go over here and do it's really not a trail of, and that's why you know i think you read any artist wikipedia it's like they all came to be doing what they're doing through like a thousand different ways so i think for me, it was just about making great stuff that people couldn't really deny, you know? And then yeah. I think from there, it was just like believing in myself. And I know all that sounds really sappy or corny or whatever, but it's like, it, Bro, it's like just what it is. Like, nah, man, like there's no way of being able to escape that process, you know? And mm -hmm. that process is going to look different for every single person because every person's starting place is different. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like to your point, I, I remember... You know, I know you were around, I mean, you were still in, I mean, high school when yeah. we first started on a roll, yeah. you know, I mean, mm -hmm. we had these t-shirts that weren't that great, but the idea of like, man, like we really believe in this vision that we've created about talking about this narrative of the process up to excellence and, yeah. and how that changes people. Like, and then even just being in love with the actual art form of developing product, you mm -hmm. know, like, and I think you said that you, you mentioned that earlier, like. You know, when you're when you're clear on who you are and you're creating from your your honest self and you're not trying to I mean, everyone gets influences, but when you're not trying to mimic something and you're clear on who you are and mm -hmm. you're clear about what you love and what you're doing and you this is not about clout chasing, but you have a perspective that you mm -hmm. feel like needs to be shared with the world like this it 
it, it can take you two years to, to kind of get things going and, mm-hmm. or it could take you 10, you know, mm-hmm. or it could take you 15, you know, and, and even the idea of getting it going, like, that's not, that's relative. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like being clear, like on what the win is. Like one of the things I keep hearing you talk about is like your, the win for you. I mean, obviously you got to provide a living for yourself, mm-hmm. but it is not, it's, I don't get the impression that it's accolades or it's mm. awards. Like there's, mm. you feel, it seems like you feel compelled to talk about truth from your vantage point and mm. communicate it in a way that provokes thought. Mm. You know, yeah, would you say that's accurate? I would say that's interesting. That's a good reading of it, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm interested in a lot of things. I like, I also really am interested in like chamomile tea right now. <laughs> I think like, yeah, I mean, uh, I I I I think um yeah you have to reconcile all that all that shit it's like <laughs> um truth or or um, making making good stuff I mean I think my, like one thing I like about my work in the in the um the uh one thing I like about the process of how I work and the work I make is like basically Instagram has been like a building block um and and so I think for me i put work out there and then i get feedback right and i think that that's honestly like been the best way for me to grow um like putting pictures online and seeing what people respond to and doing a whole lot of like image deep dives has been a big thing for me in terms of basically like making my work better um and then just like enter you ask like oh is that what are you interested in i'm interested in always making my work better i mean i don't i think i have such an insatiable like hunger i think um that's just like it it can sometimes take over me a little bit but i'm like always asking my friends and people around me how can this be better how can this be better or you know what do you think of this do you think that Mm. the yellow should be more orange or you know what i mean it's just a thousand i i'm like a 20 questions person so um i think i have a hunger in me to just make better work i think that's why the work has just been getting better i think that's why um it's been on an incline and th- that's been very public for better or for worse, but that's part of it. Like it's part of my process. It's not coming at you with this thing that's finished for me when, when I'm doing stuff, it's kind of like nothing's ever really done. I'm always tinkering with shit and I'm always, yeah. I'm always tinkering, even a picture. It's like, I might post it, but then I might take it down and rearrange the colors. Or I might like recrop it or I'm, you know what I mean? So it's like, I think all of that for me is how I make shit. And then somebody else is going to make something a different way. But uh, yeah. yeah, Man, I think that's beautiful, man. And one of the, you know, we're going to get to a couple more questions, but like that was like a perfect segue. Like one of the consistent mm-hmm. questions that, you know, we've been asking everyone that comes on you know, study breaks is, you know, I guess like even in, in this, and you may have just answered it, um, but yeah, in this season of your life right now, like, what does that process to excellence look like for you? Um, oh, okay. In this season. Well, these days, I'm just trying to not get too distracted by thinking about the coronavirus. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's a fun. You know, every 15 minutes, I get a little bit worried, um, get cooped up in what, the house. What worries you the most, though? Well, people dying. You know, I mean that that, that 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 tends to have an effect on some on people. Yeah, people dying and being in New York and New York is feels like a ghost town right now. And the sun is shining, but it's spring. But then you can't really, you know what I mean? It's like it's really yeah. weird. And I, I find myself sitting on Instagram all day and like, I was, oh shit, Callie, I'm, Callie, I need to hit you up. It's been too long. But um, uh, I don't know. I'm just, yeah, I, I I'm trying to work, but honestly, I'm a bit distracted right now. <laughs> that's fair man. that's hey, that's a fair and honest, honest <laughs> answer man um i, I want to get to a couple more questions um <laughs> there was a important question that um someone met mitch ass seraph my bad bro for butchering your name um but as african african-american photographer focusing on poc masculinity mm-hmm. would you recommend mm-hmm. signing with art partners which and which agencies would you recommend yeah, that's funny. Um, I, I think you have to go with whatever agency is, is feels best for you. Um, 
and like I know that's again like a sappy general generalization or whatever, but um, you know I just went with the one that feels right for me. I I interned at um. I interned at Art Partner, and so I get this question a lot, also, where it's like, "Oh, should I join Art Partner?" What you know? I think that it, you're you're kind of asking the wrong question in a way, because um, you know you need to get to know all the agencies, and you need to first, you know, have work that you believe in. There's a couple steps before the question, "Do I join Art Partner?" happens. You know, it's like yeah. that felt right at the stage I got to. Um, so, you know. I think I think that's a hard question to answer. I think there's a couple things that have to be lined up first before you feel ready to join an agency. You have to have the conversations with those agency. You have to figure out your contracts. Like there's a lot of shit in there. That's yeah. like a per that's like a you know, you need a a mentor or a personal con consultant or something. I, I I can't answer that, you know. That's fair. That's fair. Um this seems kind of a, a little bit of a lighthearted question. Um, Paula V. Guy Sande, um, which, uh, which was Tyler's first creative job? What was your first creative job? Uh-oh, hold up. The mailman might be here again. I don't know who this is. Sorry, one second. Are you good? Um, also, there was a, um, while we're waiting, there was a question that was asked about, um, uh, who was it? Uh, Savannah um, underscore morals on roll. I'm not familiar with your brand, um, but um, would to hear about your platform. I would. I'm, I'm assuming you're saying you would want to hear about the platform. Um, yeah, you can obviously. If you guys scroll down, you guys can follow us at on roll clothing. Um, if you you guys can go straight to our website on roll shop dot com. Uh, study breaks is something that we do every week. And um, yeah, for the foreseeable future, we're gonna keep this going. So we're always gonna be having dope guests, um, you know, like Tyler, who's gonna come and have dialogue with us um, about stuff that they're doing, their interactions with the brand, things that are going on in the culture, you know. So we would love for you guys to to follow us and continue to stay engaged with the things that we're doing. Um, and we are based in Atlanta, Georgia. So uh, the connection between me and Tyler is that my business partner is Tyler's older cousin. So. You know, um, just personal, very. I mean, I remember him being a little kid, and you know, even graduating from high school, and just seeing the things <laughs> that you've gone on to do, man. Like, you know, we're all super proud of you, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, no doubt. Um, but yeah, so to that question, your creative uh, project. Uh, what was your first creative creative job? Oh, for okay, um, first creative job. I mean, you could argue that working in a cake bakery is a creative job. <laughs> did you work at a cake bakery uh-huh yeah i worked i worked really? at piece of cake are you baking right now do you still bake no 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 i was just the cashier but i mean oh. it was creative in a way <laughs> it was creative in a way <laughs> okay um i mean i i learned i did i did watch the cooks which was <laughs> interesting do you cook um, at all now yeah yeah no i i make some stuff i mean like my kitchen is Fan really sandwiches no, no, I, I make like, I mean, I'll make, I'll make like good food. Like my kitchen's a little small is the, is the thing. And my house oh, is a bit, my house is a mess because I don't know, like, like half my, like I used to work in here, right? So my archive is in here and like my books are behind me and stuff. And I'm currently moving into a studio. So um, it's been a really slow process that's been kind of halted by the quarantine because so so my shit is just in a mess. So I just kind of cook just for survival right now. But when I get like a nicer crib situation, you know. I hope you know how to season chicken better than your your cousin chef because <laughs> that that fool he can't cook to save his life. <laughs> chicken be bad dry. <laughs> nah. I haven't actually I haven't actually had his chicken. Oh, nah, uh, do yourself a favor and don't do it to yourself. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> I, I can't. I can't actually imagine what that's like. I, I, I don't know. I'm. I'm learning. We'll. We'll. We're, we're getting there. I, I do make like. When I went to Jamaica, I got jerk sauce. And make some, some stuff with that, you know. That's what's up, man. Yo, um, as we're getting ready to wrap up, you know, I've spent like the last hour, like, and both myself and other. <laughs> Blair, you can't boil water. Shut up. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, we, you know spent a lot of time asking you questions you know everyone on the chat's been asking you questions man i hope that this has been a great time for you we yeah, definitely appreciate no, no, you know thank you um, yeah absolutely man i i'm curious man like you know again like you've been around myself and darnell 
yeah Chris you know from the beginning of the brand like I'm curious like are there any questions that you have had from mm. us about the brand and the inception and how we've kind of got mm. you know start doing things that we're doing like mm. want to give space for you to ask anything yeah I mean what where uh you know where do you want to go from here with the quarantine especially how's that affecting y'all um how, you know is it affecting y'all um yeah talk to me about like what you see the future looking like and yeah yeah so um someone just asked me the question what do i do um i'm one of the co-owners um I had a production you know of, of honor roll clothing um and so i, I work everything from initial idea of of a of a of a collection uh, or a capsule do all the fabric sourcing work with the factories that whole nine right so you know to tyler i was we were in the process of actually getting ready going to production for spring mm. we just came off of a, a strong first quarter um and what we yeah we were getting ready to just kind of continue to go on with the projects and we had a strong and still do have a strong year you know lined up you know, post this quarantine, you know, situation with with um, coronavirus, you know, it's it's honestly forced us to kind of take a step back and not really evaluate, um, but give a, it's given us an opportunity to do some things that we, under normal circumstances, wouldn't be able to do, right? So mm -hmm. case in point, even what we're doing right now with study breaks, you know, we, I, we probably wouldn't have the opportunity to sit, to sit down and talk with you like this because your schedule is super packed, right? It has mm -hmm. nothing to do with like a desire, but we, same thing with, you know, you know, our guy Frank, or, or, or now a friend that I've, a person I'm developing a friendship with, Alexander John, mm -hmm. you know, like these are people who we wouldn't have the space that just have these candid conversations with. Right. And, and honestly, without this disruption in our quote unquote, you know, normal life, you know, we wouldn't have been thinking about it. Yeah. You know, um, you know, so, I mean, we've been blessed, you know, greatly to be able to, to take a step back mm -hmm. and really to put in play, you know, some of the the um, community development that um, that we've been wanting to do. I mean, we've done fashion panels on a quarterly basis to talk about the business of fashion and stuff like that, you know, but um, yeah. Yeah, man, like this is just giving us space to explore other possibilities. I mean, and we'll also you know, be releasing product, you know, product is going to be coming out. Yeah. You know, we're working, uh, we're figuring out exactly like what that needs to, ro how that rollout needs to happen because, right. you know, we know that people's financial interest right now is not in buying product. Right. You know, it's trying to figure out like, what is this next, what's the next week going to look like? Right. You know, so I mean, we yeah. definitely want to be aware of that, but at the same time, um, you know, we want to make sure that, um, yeah, like we're keeping product going, we're creating because like, it's good, it's good for us. Yeah. It's good for other people to continue to stay inspired. Um, you know, so yeah, man, you know, we will continue to produce product. We're probably going to be focusing a whole lot more on content development. So doing stuff like study breaks, you know, so even all this, right, you know, that we're doing right now. Yeah. Everyone will be able to go to our our, um, our journal on our website, which is honorroshop.com and view all, this, all the interviews that we've been doing, you know, so and there'll be some other editorials that we put up. So yeah, man, that's going to be the main focus, you know, cool. um, yeah, for the next few months, you know, figuring out what rolling out a product is going to look like, um, how to shoot it, you know, with, you know, wanting to be sensitive to social distancing. Um, yeah, and figuring out more dope ways to, to, to make um, some great content. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's a good plan. Well, thank you for having me. Absolutely, absolutely, man. We appreciate Much everyone. Um, you know, hopping on. Um, there was a, one other question I want to answer. Uh, raw underscore is Ratch Child prototype. It's predecessor. The oh, oh, okay, that wasn't a question. In any case, yeah, man, appreciate you. Um, thank you. you hopping on with us. Um, uh, does Shep have your your mailing address? Yeah, he should. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, look. Thankfully, the the postal service has not shut down yet. So yeah. Um, I'll be um. Yeah, go ahead. I'll, we'll be shooting something up your way, man. Just say thank you, man, for for the support. Oh, um, you. And you know, Ra is Ratchchild Prototype. Yo, I, I see the comment. Yeah, just shoot us a DM, um, and we can hopefully hop on the line and see and see what's shaking. We appreciate okay. everyone coming in. Tyler, anything else you want to tell the people before we wrap up? No, thank you, man. Much appreciated. Absolutely, man. Love you, bro. Y'all be cool, um, and y'all be safe out there. And yeah, we'll look forward to connecting with you guys again next week. Cool. All right, man. All right. Peace, man. See you.